Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Expo Arena here in Katowice, Poland. We are one game potentially away from the end of the day in Group B, where QG would theoretically take the second seed. Fnatic, however, if they pick up a win, we'll be in for one more game. Uh, before we went to an ad break, we were talking about a team fight, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about the team fight because it was a 5v4. Uh, Fnatic yeah. were down about 9,000 gold, so that helps a lot. But Monty, how did it play out? Let's let's set up the 5v4 because it's very important to how that team fight played out because the explosive cask was already used, as was the LeBlanc ultimate, which prevented Fevvin from getting back into that yep. fight very effectively. He had to wait for the double distortion to come back to even actually output damage. So. No, Deficio has some other stuff to say about this one. Yeah, so what ends up happening, and, and that's been the big difference between Fnatic and QG today when they played against each other, is that QG doesn't make these individual mistakes in team fights, and Fnatic do make these mistakes. So after they kill Swift, take him down. Moore actually flashes over the wall on Braum and, and uses ulti, but the claw from Lissandra doesn't reach over the wall. So Doom B doesn't take it. That's now on cooldown. This means Cly has a chance to completely zone out Lissandra from the fight, completely. Headbutt her away, run up towards the head to her where you headbutted her, and just cue her in the face. She's knocked up, she does no damage, because Fiora's right now teleporting in. Where we also see then a missed hook from, from Gamsu, so two individual mistakes. But Ty ends up flashing in, knocks up Lissandra, knocks her back into his own team, even though she had no claw, she ulties herself on four members, and basically wins the fight. Well, so, W's and then ulties. Right, yeah, W then ulties even better. So even though QG are a great team fighting team, like, a fight like that is more on Fnatic, just completely misplaying. You can never knock Elisandra back into your own team. She's just going to ulti and W and whatever and destroy you. It's like Lee Sin kicking an Alistair into your team. It's Kinda, one yeah. of those big no-nos in team fighting that you, you can't have going down. And yeah, Cly, it's, it's clear that he's only been a professional player for a few weeks now because there are a lot of, there have been a lot of misplays tonight, today in general. Well, let's see if he can find some focus as we go into game two of this best of three. Uh, Braum is the first target ban towards Moore. He's been able to first pick it uh, in two of the three games that QG have played today. Alistair was the other champion that he played against SKT. <laughs> Fnatic are banning out the 2v2 lane. <laughs> with the use and said, okay, if we can't beat you with this combo, we're just gonna ban it away. I like the Braun ban. I think actually it's more specific, even above Alistar. The way every fight starts, he's always in the face of the AD carry or, or the AP carry, and he blocks so much damage. It is so key for the way QG team fights, so I like the ban. Potentially setting up Alistar first pick, but they have been playing Thresh, which you can take into the Alistar and you can then first pick something else. Do they ban Callista then? And if they go first I think pick, first pick Callista. Yeah, that's definitely what they're aiming for here. First pick the Callista, give the Alistar over, but then run Callista Thresh or Callista Bard. Actually, no, don't play Bard with Clay right now. He's not been playing well enough. So take the Thresh for him. And, and you run a super strong 2v2 lane where you can actually win the 2v2. Instead of opting into these where it's very even skill matchups, which Uzi has been winning. Uh, for QG. And odds are, too, Uzi would default to Ezreal in that case. So you, you do have you gotta something go else. Gotta go here. Yeah, you do have something else to play with in that case. Well, let's find out. 40 seconds left on the clock. If we see the Callista lock in, uh, Nautilus is still up and available for future drops. Oh. Uh, I don't know if I like this hover. You know they can play Fiora into it. Okay, so here's what they're thinking. They're gonna play the Jin again into the Callista. Sure. I mean, that's probably going to be the lane then, but again, it's a different beast when you play Jin into Stixay's Callista and when you play Jin into Uzi's Callista. Yeah. Very different beast for me. It doesn't seem like QG is picking Callista purely probably because of the Jin so as an option. Super surprised about these early picks here. Mithy, Mithy will be crying seeing this uh, <laughs> Callista follow, fall down to second rotation. But what does this mean for the rest of the drop then? Uh, <laughs> Are they still baiting it out? Victor's also open, has been banned against... Uh, Doom be every other B. game. I mean, Victor Callista now? There's no real threat on... No, because you don't want to take the Callista because you want to play Jin. <laughs> okay. So, like... <laughs> but why would you give Callista and Alistair then? I think it's super risky what Fnatic is doing. Um, but, I mean, QG can now pick the Callista if they want. Or we have this weird pick and ban phase where because Jin is an option, Nobody wants Callista. Well, there's also <laughs> the real danger of the Victor going through, which has been banned out in every game of, uh, you know, by QG's opponents so far. And we know how dangerous Doenby can be on that pick with the teleport. He has great map presence. And I mean, it's, it's his kind of pick. He's really good on it, but Victor is still a champion. 
who you can pressure early game and you can play around him very easily because he can't really roam. He just sits and wave clears mid and actually allows the Fnatic to apply pressure on this 2v2 lane if they opt into it and it is a victor pick coming. Super, super interesting pick and ban and I like the mind games. Like we have this Jin pick ready so we're not gonna first pick Kalista. We expect the Fiora into Nautilus, and that's a good matchup then for B, especially later on. Right, let's see where this Corky goes. It could be in Uzi's hands. It is also technically a potential flex, despite the fact that Doom B doesn't have any professional games, at least this year, on that champion. Um, the option is there, and there we go. Locked in Corky plus Fiora, so... And also what the Fiora does is it allows you to have some physical damage, because if they were to run a, a different or a tanky top laner, you'd end up with perhaps Victor... Cork, or right. Victor Corky Gragas, and that would not be good either. And this Corky pick is so smart now because it is a flex pick. So if you see the Jin, worst case, you just take Corky AD carry if, if that's what you want and play it with Alice line. You play a super defensive lane. Obviously, it's still an issue against the Jin, but like that, it gives you the option at least. You're not really showing your, your full 2v2 lane. I still think you can take Callista Alice line into Jin, and worst case, you can lane swap it or you rely on the fact that you have been a much stronger 2v2 lane than Ply and Reckless together. 15 seconds left on the clock. Febivin did run the Quinn mid earlier today. Has hovered. We've heard a lot from actually uh, Mithy as, as well as Dexter talking about some of the EU pros and their preference for that champion. So the Jin is locked in, Jin Thresh. Let's see if Doom is going to play the Corki and Uzi decides to go Callista or if he's just going to take the Corki and try to play safe, as you've mentioned, Officio. Yeah, what I also like about Kalista is that you actually have an extra engage tool with Alistar being thrown onto the Jin. Super strong for late game team fights when you want to just target out Jin. Uh, I mean, this is such a <laughs> tricky pick and man face. I'd like to see a teleport mid here, though, just because you will be able to match some of the pressure that uh, the the uh, Quinn is going to put on in the mid and late game. And I think that's not really a surprise to anybody. We've actually seen in Korea, the uh, Fiora or the Quinn uh, Victor matchup before, and it hasn't gone great for Quinn. Interesting. Must be said. I would actually well, expect Quinn to win, especially the first few levels with Thunderlords. You should be able to bully the Victor quite a bit. Yeah, but what about the fact that Doombi may not run TP? Uh, only reason I say it on is Lissandra. He ran Ignite in that previous game. There is the possibility. Victor is now locked in. We've got a few seconds before those summoner spells are confirmed. Deficio, will you be super disappointed if you don't see that TP again because you were heartbroken yeah, I think, when that I mean, game loaded? Worst case, you run Exhaust if you want to be better in the 1v1 early on in the lane. I still think TP is super good for him because he can actually trade early, use his potions, and then just TP back to lane. It's, it's super yeah. underrated by a lot of people, so I think TP is the better option for him. You don't need to kill Quinn in lane if you're playing this Victor. You just need to honestly out-sustain her. And of course, with the victor, it does confirm the fact that it will be Corky Alistair into Jin Thresh. So, you guys have a few seconds to look at these team comps. Um, we will keep an eye on those summoner spells to see if there's any last uh, second shenanigans. Deficio, QG or Fnatic? It is our post uh, pick and ban question, and now you need to answer it. Uh, QG, I think they are the better team overall. I think there have been too many individual mistakes in these fights. And I don't see Fnatic getting a large enough, lead, large enough lead in the early game to just snowball out of control. I also, frankly, don't know what their plan is going to be with this split pushing Nautilus into the Fiora and then also having the Quinn there. They have to run the Quinn into the Fiora in that case. That means no TP. So I don't see they have enough answers to what QG is going to be throwing at them. Well, there you have it. A 2-0 here from the expert desk. We'll find out if Fnatic will go down or if they'll beat the odds. We'll be right back after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters here in Cadavitas. Uh, it is the World Championships, and a semi finalist is awaiting the winners of this matchup. Fnatic up against the Chaogu Reapers. Fnatic, though, are one game down. I'm joined by the MMs for this one. What do we make of that pick and ban phase? Very clever. I like it. Devious little stuff coming out. I'm a big Chaogu. fanboy. I always tweet about it. The, the Corky flex on fourth, the refusal to pick up the Kalista. Um, Fnatic first picking Nautilus uh, leaves a lot of question marks, especially when V just wrecked on that yeah. Yorai kind of pick already. But yeah, they saw the bait coming. They're like, okay, you want to pick Jin into Kalista? Well, you can pick Jin, but it won't be into Kalista because we have a Corky flex. An easier read than a menu with a lemonade stand for Chaogu there off Fnatic's draft. But let's see how it plays out on the Rift. Of course, this is uh, obviously one to none here. We do do, do, do lemonade stands actually have menus? Usually they just have. One dollar. Yeah, but is that we, a menu? We don't get tend to get them in Europe, mate. mate it's a menu. <laughs> I don't have, we don't have lemonade stands either. I even Bloody Aussies. Oh, it's hot down there, mate. Hey, hello, great. You know, we have a couple of shrimps on the Need barbie, don't you? Refreshments. You know what they say, right? When life gives you melons, you may be dyslexic. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you didn't want to make the other button. No, was, uh, we'll see where that one goes. Okay. But as it is, anyway, we had a little invade coming in there, a little ward going down, a little ward placement as we tend to get at the start of these games. Not a great deal of excitement, just a little bit of vision. Not too deep, though, from either teams. And we did see, obviously, a little bit of lane swap going awry early on. And Fnatic did manage to... Uh, take them it was it was the it was the red buff invade you know the, the little fight for it so fanatic's response was all right we're just gonna three-man group and dive your tower all right we, we've talked about how qg revolutionized the lane swap <laughs> I mean, this, guy, this is them actually revolutionizing the lane swap because i have no clue what they're doing here with the three-man start they have a they have a trio jungle here so they're so confident that they will get actually the lane swap going that they just have more accelerate the duo jungle here to get them back to the top lane. Now he's gonna path up all the way. This should lead to a, at least a big tempo advantage on the side of Fnatic, but QG looking to completely clear out that jungle. Look at Clyde, he's gonna walk in, but Swift and V will be so high HP that they're looking to clear all these camps before Clyde can even interrupt. And then Spirit will be left with so few camps. So, forced to really push out here, but it will come at the cost of a tower push top lane. Swift, luckily, Sidestep, Spirit expecting him to try and back straight to the turret. Instead, he chose to... Yeah, what's V doing? The middle. What it's is the lane swap. V, you actually ran to the bottom lane. This is like looper level teleport. I'm so confused right now. Swifty, walk there. <laughs> not sure. Uh, v at least has the, um, the presence of mind to not go any closer to that tower while Reckless is belting away at it. Clyde so there's... Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's four members of Fnatic down the bottom. Their response is to just sit, sit in jungle and not really push that top turret. They're not really piling on it. Mitches don't know about QG's next level lane swap, but he's a teleport towards the top side anyway. It's Gamsu. Oh, boy. And so now Spirit needs to be there That's quicker because V has teleport Gamsu. I don't uh, know about that, that buddy. Was a, that was a looper teleport right there from Gamsu. What was he thinking? Oh, that was bah, the combo from Moore. Just no, you're never supposed to W in because that will always get flashed. You have to open with Q. So well, this all is... kinds of crazy right now. There's a lot of words I'd use for this game so far, and not a lot of them I can use on air at the moment, but it's, it's a little messy to start things off here. And now you can see Chaogu, they absolutely want a piece of this one. They're going to dive in. It's going to be more early. start things off. Managed to get the pulverize down. V manages to get a little hit, but the juggling what? is awful. They just can't manage to finish off. Now Spirit, surely they can lock him down. There they can. There's first blood, but Gamsu might be able to get something from this one. We'll get the shield down. There's oh, one. Can he get a second? Oh, he does. Oh, the oh, two is. If he goes down, it's a double kill. What an absolute... I can't say it. It's a clown fiesta. Go it's call a it clown it is. fiesta. There we go. That's that's a clean version. Go back to lane swap. JLQG. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 gold. That uh, was horrendous. But Fnatic also made some major mistakes. That teleport from Gamsu should never happen. That was literally a looper level teleport. Uh, if you don't know what it is, watch QG versus RNG. Yeah, this is well. Perhaps the analyst desk should break this down. <laughs> it's a replace. <laughs> But yeah, major mistakes in the end. Um, Fnatic still pulls ahead. So, Gamsu should never be here. More plays this wrong in two different occasions. Like, he goes for the early WQ combo. Gamsu with a good flash. He doesn't even combo. He goes W, and then he tries to space with an auto on that dive. So that's mistake number one from Moore. 
Then Gamsu is still here. He's trying to survive. Spirit comes in. This is a 4v2 dive. And Morris is going in right now. He's going to flash in aggressively before Swift is even there. They can wait with this for as long as they want. Look at more. Takes two tower shots before his team falls in. And a good body slam from Swift will take down Spirit as he dashes there. And then, of course, Gamsu gets donated two kills to charity. They could just back out here, reset it entirely, but they're just not in sync whatsoever. Look at Uzi. Use the two. heal there as well. Didn't use his flash, though. So. Oh, Swift caught out. All right, okay. So Fnatic, they knew they needed a good start here, and they've kind of got it. Just down to Chao Gu, just not really knowing how to do the lane swaps. I mean, we, we talked about this. This was, this was top of the show, day one. We talked about this, and it's kind of case in point. I mean, now, somehow, we've got both two lanes go up towards the top side here, and Gamsu is 1v1 against V. We've seen this already a fair bit. It's almost like a Unicorns of Love effect, where they used to be <laughs> called like a chaos team to trigger Monte Cristo mostly <laughs> and but teams would buy into the chaos so much that they themselves would kind of go down to the level and then unicorns would beat them with experience QG have seemed to have spread the lane swap plague here onto Fnatic and both of them have made some questionable decisions well we haven't really had a great deal of chance to look at this mid lane we just heard Monty talking about how Victor does tend to come out on top in this matchup. Moore taking a little bit of abuse. There's a hook on him. Moore, no ulti yet. Remember, he's only level three. He's a long way to go on this one. Uzi, though, at five, could try and turn this one around. He's going to try and put some damage back on this 3v2 setup. And honestly, it worked out for him. There was some interesting target prioritization there from QG. Uh, from Fnatic, rather. I think they could have just finished more. Fevon exposed, though, here. Swift. No longer has a flash available, so if Fevon knew that, he could actually stay there. I don't think the body slam would have connected, so he Fevon just used his ignite. flash. He just used his ignite on uh, Doin B there, so that must. But Doin B wasn't even close to going down. But I don't know what that was all about. Weird. Just, just strange. I mean, we may have a moment here to take a breath and at least see where we're at after all of that. Now we have some sort of two v two situation in the top lane, which is always. Normally an indicator of maybe a normal laning phase, perhaps from here on out. For Vivian, yeah. Getting pushed in here is Doin B. He's going to be that aggressor, of course, like we've already said multiple times. Yeah, but what we have to track here, though, isn't the goal that you see on the top of the screen. It's more experience, you know, how is V doing against Gamsu here? Roughly even levels. Is anybody really trailing? Because that is something you very often don't pay enough attention to in a lane swap. But it seems all pretty fairly even across the board. Doin B wants to get his blue buff here. Gets level 6, 7 on Victor with a blue buff. He will be able to easily just wave clear over and over, and the Quinn will now be resorted to roam to add pressure to the map because he won't be able to bust open a trade in that mid lane. We saw this Jin get to a point for Fnatic where he literally made CLT run for the hills. How do QG respond to this threat? I mean, they just have to be make sure that they watch the game because Jin is one of those picks that is deceptive in the approach because the, the snare that he can pull out on max range is just... It's so hard to predict because allies can trigger that effect. Jin doesn't need to hit you to get the passive on that will trigger the snare. So anybody hitting an enemy champion, suddenly Reckless can do maybe three, a 2,500 range snare or something uh, crazy like that. And then QG need to be ready for that. They need to factor that into their decision making. If they have never played really against many Jins, they will not be ready for that in a coordinated environment. Well, three man stuck down the bottom here. It is going to get answered. You can see two members of Chao looking to it, but Forbiven just around the side, looking to try and snipe off someone, trying to cause a little bit of disruption, but not falling for it. Chao Gu will hold strong. More down the bottom lane. A little snipe from Reckless there. Not going to hit onto Uzi, but Clyde not really sure of the position of the support of More there. Well, just step away from this one. I, I, I think we want to go back to the whole uh, the pick and ban phase. I mean, I love the fact that they were trying to bait this Callista out. They were like, yeah, okay. I mean, we saw it a mile away. Everybody saw it a mile away. Unfortunately for Fnatic, when it came down to the last two picks, they were kind of like, oh, guys, they've not, they've not fell for it. Yeah, you can see them just, just run the clock down. How does it work? I mean, obviously, oh, he's going to walk away from that one. How does it work? A, a Jin versus uh, Corky. A Jin versus Corky, I mean, it obviously... It's hard to, to really explain that right now because Reckless is, is stuck in a really awkward position here. Pickaxe with the Crit Cloak, no BS, so no damage to go for an all-in. Obviously, what you want to do in the Jin Thresh lane is have Thresh walk up auto and then go for a Flay so people are slowed. And then Reckless Snare will come out, guaranteed hit, and then you can start stacking some damage. But Reckless is just so far behind the momentum. If you have to lane into Uzi right now with a Sheen, so much poke available. You see this from Doin B, you saw him just pop the Chaos Storm, by the way. Uh, some people might find that strange, it's kind of a thing that he does. He just wants to shove for Vivian out. And there's some really good ward coverage, actually, towards the blue side of Fnatic's jungle. 
close to the mid lane. So that aggression is actually facilitating for a deep vision to be yeah. established. You just focus Fevon to use his spells on the creeps to even get the CS on the tower. And then Dovi just shoves it in over and over and over. And that's the going through the rough early laning phase, but then picking up the blue buff, he's just now in control of this mid, uh, mid lane matchup because he has the wave control. That's what we talked about in the last game too, you know, these 2v2 bot lanes. It's all about who has push. Push prio um, is what they call it these days. And though be right now, he has the mid prio, which means that Fevon is unlikely to roam unless Spirit comes in to liberate him, push him together, maybe go for a play on Dorby, be force him back, and suddenly Quinn can go turbo jet and roam to the bot lane. Spirit taking another pass down the bottom, maybe trying to Get a bit of a play on towards V here. He is going to come around the side. V does get slowed out. Good repost, but it's going to be a little too soon. And V gets taken down with ease between the Korean pair. Yeah, the Korean pair, good job holding their cooldowns there. Not that it ultimately wouldn't matter too much, but V obviously has to repost right there because you can't react to the animation of the kick. So it's just guessing. Spirit and Gamsu with patience. Solid pickoff. It's giving him a little bit more control here at least. Gamsu and Spirit are set up together. Pings towards that dragon as well, so that might even be a start for them here. We can see that Spirit is going to be starting that one off and elsewhere on the map. MG just you can actually see more, you know, sat near that Rift Herald, gravitating back and forth here. You can see he's sat in lane, but going into that jungle, really wanting to get a bit of presence there as this dragon goes down. Yeah, it's a cross map right now. They know there's a lot of attention going towards shutting down V right now. The right play from Fnatic, they're identifying the mid to late game threat here on the split push. That is one matchup they need to keep even or ahead in the side from Gamsu, so that they can at least have some side lane pressure, and then they can play around uh, maybe with the runs from Quinn, the pick offs from the Jin late game, fantastic uh, champion overall. And QG may not be ready for it, because we saw CLG wasn't ready for the late game Jin because it's such a unique champion to play against, obviously. That was a super late game, Jin, yeah. as well. I mean, Over on the K Gold. I'm just really happy to see more Jin. I love playing with him, against him. I think he has a really unique kit. Opens up for so many outplay uh, potential moments, and I don't think people are even close to discovering the skill ceiling on that champion. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty crazy ulti. Uh, but as was shown, you can sidestep it. There is, there is a chance, but if it catches you, especially that fourth bullet, it will wallop you slows you up every shot and the last one is guaranteed to crit so yeah. it's very very hard once you do get tagged by the first one to avoid it's it's kind of like this mounting dread knowing that you are eventually going to be gunned down do you, do you think this is going to become a tactic i know i know obviously it's a experimental one for fanatic do you think of the eu lcs teams will be looking at this and thinking all right okay this is what fanatic to bring into the plate let's have a little try with it i think Jin will eventually make his way in there um if people can just get enough peel for him he's low mobility if he's caught he's dead mm. but he can be a good backline ad carry spirit here bounced around oh the lantern's gonna get him out luckily enough but uzi was there you can see the flash away from the hook from clyde trying to lock him up the switch coming forward he gets on towards spirit and the chase continues the box does just click swift as he comes forward and he takes a heck of a lot of damage as he approaches it's curtain call swift is gonna drop down from even actually got that kill there and now fanatic turn the fight around chaos storm chucks from even down he must have come the gravity field catches too but Kai trying to get away uzi always on his heels but he's hooked him under the tower still doinby gets that one uzi another tower here but hangs on to life with his fingertips. Dominant stuff, no doubt about it. That's that's what Chalga were looking for. You know, Fnatic had this great start, and then they make the mistake. Yeah, While that was happening, obviously, uh, Gamsu was pushing the, uh, the tier two turret down the bottom lane. We saw V also uh, pushing in towards the mid lane, but turret, but that was just... Just Zero hesitation. I mean, that's what they want. A little bit of hesitation, like you say. Just caught them off guard. Yeah, Spirit here. He desperately wants to try to get the Lantern. Nope. One knock back. Ping pong. One more. Up you go. Gets to the Lantern. But Kai actually is a little bit too close. Really good reaction flash here from Uzi. And at this point, so much is used. This body stab flash from Swift is, yeah, beautiful. It just puts every day, everybody just on the back foot here. Swift, yeah, he will go down. But more and Uzi chasing in. And this gravity field right here. Is absolutely brutal here for the side of Fnatic. Just, just can't get down. Should have disengaged after that one kill. Fnatic just trying to help their allies a little bit too much. Sometimes it is wiser to sacrifice. And Kuji showing that they just have the mastery of these skirmishes and quasi team fights. I mean, Lovely little step in as well. Doin B, just, just that little block. It Uzi would have died to the tower that otherwise. But as it is, hello, going in towards the middle. They caught Doin B. Speaking of gravity field, just punched him straight back into his own one. And that's a beautiful little answer from Fnatic. Got a bit of freedom in the mid lane to push up on that one. Pretty cut and dry, I like to think. You can see what Spirit invested in getting that kill. His ultimate and the flash. He really wanted a piece of Doin B.
yeah, just really good opening here for Fnatic. That's what you need to look for, you know, find the kick flash, the flank, picking somebody off, and then starting to siege up. You know, obviously, hey, here, half Hook City. Mitch? I love how the uh, evolution of, of League of Legends goes. I mean, I remember back to season two when we'd first see them sort of play as Lee Sin. We'd be like, whoa, what is going on? But now it's just, that's a standard Lee Sin. Yeah, it's a, one now. of those it's concepts that have become standard and, and elementary, and that's why we need just very, that's why we also recycle some of the older players because the new generation of, of players kind of grows up with, with these plays being standard. It's mm. already embedded into their like mechanics. They just, they have to be so good at the game, whereas experience and just knowledge is more important back in the day. I have a bit pulverized on Gamsu, but nothing to fear, Manic fans. It is still a very close game. As it is, Forbidden's gonna go back. How is he gonna itemize here? Because he's, he's up against Obviously, Victor this time around. It's not not your standard itemization. You can see he's already got more Mamolius in there, so it's pretty much all he can really go. Now, just for these damage. Oh my God, Reckless! What are you doing up here, buddy? I mean, he has boots of swiftness too, so he's really stuck in a damage shop right here. Swift. Oh, Fevin going down too. Oh, he's stuck straight <laughs> to the lantern. Clyde reading that. He's like, yeah, I know he's gonna pinball pinball him right straight to the lantern. Prediction here, but QG picking off Reckless one side, Fevin on the other. Just controlling the map. Well, I mean, all that Jin can do is artfully walk away from a gank. Super mobile. Still an answer there, and Reckless still out for the moment. Fnatic look to try and just gather themselves up here. Uzi. TP. Teleport to right the to the top. Okay, this is going right around the back. Now they've managed to stop Uzi. Uzi stopped back in. They're going to be baited into Forbidden. Forbidden is just trying to draw them in here. Look at the team collapsing, but also look at the river. Doin B is making his way around. Uzi's going to be the focus target. He will get caught out. Will he go down? Spirit trying to get one last hit on him. He will finish down. But now V coming in. Here comes Doin B. Just coming out of the river. He can turn this one around. V trying to bid it from the health, but it's not going to be enough. Doin B wanted a death ray for Forbidden, but he'll catch Gamsu inside the gravity field. And look at this flourish there coming from Jin. Doin B must be careful. Slowed up. Gamsu he wants to lock him in place, and Clyde's got to come forward as well. The hook connects onto the cow. He was going to get a play back. Doinby still needs to be careful. Clyde caught under the tower. He takes the tower, hits more, even more damage coming. Gamsu able to avoid it only just in the ace for Fnatic in an absolutely chaotic team fight. Fantastic stuff, and that's going to be the tower as well. And what more could they take from it? Well, it doesn't really matter because they just made some horrific mistakes a moment ago against Chao Gu, and then a teleport way round the back. A beautiful little bait. And here's Gamsu starts it all off. Yeah, Gamsu starts it off. So Fevin doing a fantastic job here. Basically juking out. Oh, this is lit, lit after the jukes already. Swift follows off. I think we have a pick off somewhere here. Yeah, this is the pick off we missed. Obviously, Reckless chasing down Swift. I think he will use his ultimate here because it was on cooldown while they were going for the dive. Find Swift here. Yeah, here we go. One shot, two shots. That's enough. And then later off, they obviously go for that dive. Swift. Or Doinby getting here on the max range snare too. That, that's what we talk about from Jin, you know, that is the power. Kai, a little over eager here, one could argue. Um, he just wants to go in, gets the play on Doinby too, locks him down. And I going for that dive. Ace, tower in the end. Brutal. Brutal. Savage, wrecked. Whichever it is, they were destroyed because we could be getting it all over again here. We're going into a dragon fight. This time it's Chao starting things off. Fnatic a little late to the party, but Gamsu flanking around the side. Uzi already taken fairly though, though it's Clyde's out towards the back. Spirit opens up the account for Fnatic here, but Reckless is doing good damage as well. Spit caught amongst it here. Spirit trying to back away and he does get to safety. But Moore and V are still pushing the envelope for some reason. Moore's gonna have to back away. I think one more auto and it's a double kill for Reckless. Another very, very strong fight for Fnatic. A four for one here for Fnatic with a beautiful pincer using Gamsu's strengths, which is tank beefiness and CC on one side and then completely collapsing from the other side and that's what QG usually defends so well against they understand these team fights but they're getting caught with their pants down twice now by Fnatic and this is looking like a repeat from the CLG series convincing win game one almost counting them out game two and then suddenly this happens Uzi that was a package yeah. being used there Febben playing at the outskirts of this fight Kai getting the hook onto Uzi Swift is doing Dragon here to finish it off, but at this point he needs to start fighting or his team will just desperately lose. Chaos Storm did a lot of damage in there. I mean, that's really as much as he could hope for, but simple numbers was the advantage in the end there for Fnatic. Now, looking towards the mid lane. Hello, what is going on? Jin popping out the wave with his ulti. Why not? 
It, interesting enough, you actually like a new looks laser. Zero points in, in captive audience. Is that fairly standard for Jin to sort of not go for that E at all yet? I mean, Everything name, by the way. I think, I think Doa pointed this one out earlier. I know I remember many years ago when I was at, in the Riot HQ uh, speaking to the designers and saying, guys, can you stop making absolutely ridiculous names for us to call out? And then Super, super Mega Death Rocket came out. <laughs> uh, Mega Inferno Bomb. It was Did just it like, just yeah, guys. You, you, I don't, well, it's Daniel Klein, I blame. I mean, it's, <laughs> he went there and suddenly it all went mental. Not having the trap skill on, on the gin is a little peculiar. Overall, I may have to get back to that because V is lurking in the shadows here, going on Gamsu. Gamsu, well, he's going to have company as well. Swift also coming for with V. Gamsu actually able yeah, <laughs> to stay through a little bit of this damage, but now it's going to come even more. Forbidden comes in from the backside. This is what Gamsu was waiting for, and the fight turns around. V gets over the wall, but Spirit follows him. It's a deadly flourish towards Swift. Slows him up, but Uzi's there. He says, back off, my friend, and even Earth has to jump on out there as Kaya wants to come forward. Will he land the hook? Just missed Uzi, and the man will get back to safety. Yeah, Doran B split pushing in the side lane. This time, no teleport to join the fight, so QG, they're always so reliant on having double TP available to kind of never get into these outnumbered situations, but now now they overchase, and this is the difference between last game. When V was ahead of Gamsu, Gamsu would have been dead twice already, but because he actually got the assistance necessary in the early game, he's now tanky enough to buy enough time to stall for his team to follow up when he's under pressure. 16 kills to nine. Fnatic in the driving seat. It's only a 3,000 gold differential, and the Baron is up. And don't forget, there's a Gragas in the form of Swift on Chowgu Reaper. So don't get starting anything off too soon. And let's not forget that Chaos Storm in that little pit would be horrific. So Fnatic have to play this one very cautiously still. He does see more actually getting a little bit close for comfort. This seems to have been found by Clyde. He's going to hook him up and drop him in the box. Swift actually gets slowed up as well. And Spirit in the back. He managed to isolate Uzi. Drops already. And now Doyen B. Least response, but he's getting forced out of this one. Spirit and Gamsu combining nicely for Viv and says, Come at me, bro. V hits the deck. And a great hook on towards Swift. Fnatic doing a perfectly clear curtain call for more. Will it be enough damage? It's definitely going to slow him. Spirit wants to chase on. And Fnatic got to get the clean ace. It's a triple kill for Spirit. He's going to get it. Time for the Baron. Yeah, Gamsu, MVP of these fights, completely zones Doan B and Fnatic here. They're the non-believer in this equation of the Kings of Team Fighting. <laughs> Holy, they completely reinvent their style here. And they just play so much better than game one. And finally organized, Gamsu completely understands his role in these team fights. Goes onto Doan B, zones, turns around. Let's watch this again. They find a pick up more. Generally engaging on Alistar is not what you want. How does Uzi die? Flanks, this is what we want from yep. Fnatic. Don't all go knocking on the front door. Clyde is merely a distraction to get Swift uh, Spirit into place to get that kickoff. And then Gamsu done with Dombi, turns onto Swift, Reckless flashes over, and suddenly everything is gelling on Fnatic and they're catching so much momentum. In. And they're a team that is very affected by that momentum. You can really see how disappointed they are after losses, but it should propel them forward. And look how much ground Spirit covered there. He was the flank. He came and got the kill. Went all the way out the right side. Managed to get the one on Doyen B. Then all the way back to the left side to get more. Fantastic stuff. And, you know, speaking of non-believers, it's, it's better to be a non-believer than a Mitch's bitch. <laughs> I don't know which one is which. That's a weird time for that to come out. <laughs> I just, you know, you, you talked about non-believers, man. They're my subs. Uh -huh. Gotta you know, throw them out there. 21-10. Stretching that one. <laughs> Twenty-one ten. I wasn't had anything going on. Just like our producers. Is that, is that a, an application you're giving here? <laughs> Demon. Because we have to re we have to rearrange that name instead of Demon. It has to become Mandy at least. Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, you behave yourselves. Doing the for spirit there and QG looking for a way to sort of get back in front here. Gold lead now blown out incredibly in Fnatic's favor. And I mean, this is the first time these two teams have been up against each other. In fact, it was 2 1 in favor of QG last time these played at Cologne. And Fnatic definitely want this third game and they're on a, a nice trajectory. I mean, they're going to gonna get it, barring Ooh. any really big mistake, yeah. like Spirit that. getting caught, for example. Uh, click it, click it, click it. Oh, no! Oh, I couldn't quite get it off oh, of Bivin. He's going big in a 1v1. Coming out on top in that one. Swift is going to get the slowdown on him, and here comes the support. Uzi should be he's able big. to jump on this one for uh, He's quick, though. Uh, yeah, Uzi actually is just like, no, okay, won't go for it. So it was a one for one trade. Remember, Baron Buff's still on Fnatic, so there's the big advantage going on here. But this time is ticking, and this Baron Buff's not really being 
used very well. I mean, right now it will be Feven alone in the top lane. We see how big Gamso is here in the bottom lane. He's completely bullying V around, complete mirror opposite of what we saw game one. And it all comes down how the early game plays down, who gets the necessary assistance. And this time, Spirit was there to snowball his. I would say there's a, a considerable difference in Spirit's play on Lee Sin and Gragas. Yeah. Definitely gets to be the aggressor so much more in that Lee Sin and start things off. 7 1 and 7, by the way, at Triviv. And the quiet achiever, I feel like we've been zeroing in a lot on Reckless and the fashionist that is Jin. And you can see Forbidden getting around the map, and he's the split push beast here for Fnatic. Yeah, and I wonder if when this game goes game to game three and it's the final game. Don't get ahead of yourself. And uh, Uzi <laughs> starts getting panicked. Pico is in the crowd. Peekaboo. Stands up, rips off his shirt, reveals his <laughs> QG shirt, steps in and hard carries QG straight to a rematch if, to RNG. If anyone is in the crowd, just, just look to your left and right, make sure he's not sat next to you. Yeah. <laughs> Could just be in there. There is quite a lot of uh, QG staff here, so you never know. Yeah. Don't just start talking randomly. But they have a uh, very big star of a coach as well, don't they? Starcraft legend. Coach Park, yeah, Coach I mean, Park. obviously with Linko as well on the coaching staff, we spoke to him in Cologne. Um, mm -hmm. Coach Park, very well revered. And let's see now, when push comes to shove, what he's been able to make out of QG. I mean, he did manage to uh, make Evil Genius into a winning team in the Starcraft era for a little bit. Um, wish I had Coach Park. <laughs> 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 Where was my Coach Park? <laughs> All he had was Snoopy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, he got you fit. No, 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 you're not, you're not going to give him that one. You're not going to, you're not going to get, let him have a chance at uh, glory for that one. Back to the game. <laughs> Back to the game. He came a little bit later. Tower's going to go down. And hello, here's a Gamsu hook. There's the ulti coming out. And Uzi completely caught out by the little flank from Gamsu. And even uh, Rickless having to capitalize. The fight's going to continue quiet. Knocked up underneath that tower, but he gets out. Now Swift as well. He's going to have to back away in the mix's feet. We see another Reckless kill coming out. And Fnatic push forward. They can oh. see the victory inside. Swift just dragged back to get back here, son. And it's another race for Fnatic. Another triple for Reckless. And you can see they're going to push it on down. Hook City for Fnatic. They're left, right, and center being pulled apart. Chowgu Reapers had no chance in that fight. Beautiful little flanking maneuver from Gamsu. He didn't even need to teleport. He was in the bottom lane. I don't know where Uzi thought he was going to be able to escape from, but immediately just walked straight into the hook. That's where it all started. 27 kills and an 8 1 11 for Forbidden. It is very much all over. Fnatic, it's 1 1. We're going the distance once again. The dream of Europe lives on. History repeating itself from IEM Cologne, albeit a lot more critical here. And if there only, if only there was a way for us to kind of recapture those moments, you know, those highlights, those plays, and get them. I know it's amazing that you should say that, because you could go to plays.tv and relive that little oh. moment of the Gamsu hot really? going on to Uzi. It could all work out, and you could just watch it over and over. And you know what? I reckon I'd like to watch it over and over again, yeah. because yeah. Uh, that was a, a, a well well played game by Fnatic. There was a little squeaky bum moment where they managed to get caught out. A squeaky a, bum moment. A squeaky bum moment. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Squeaky bum time. You may have heard it. it's a football. Was that, was, that been, was that been you in the uh, in the green room earlier? Was that a squeaky <laughs> bum time? Well, that might, I, I just prefer to call it the leather couch. You know? it's, it's a squeaky Airboard. squeaky chair. Squeaky chair, guys. But anyway, flatulence aside, we're going to go over to the analyst desk. Take that one away, Trevor. Well, Lee, I know you are full of hot air and you continue to spout it on the caster desk. From every orifice. Oh, that is the truth indeed. Uh, welcome back to the expert desk. Uh, we are going to break down this game. Um, look, Tower Dive, it went quite badly for uh, QG right at the beginning of the game. Ooh. Couple of kills over to Gamsu's Nautilus on a champion he's very comfortable with. That had to have had an impact as the game continues to progress sure. and roll out. Uh, the weird thing is, I kind of dislike both plays that happen for both teams. Um, first, V should never go bot lane in a lane swap and just kind of stand there, do nothing. You're going get, to get killed on the tower. So he was forced to run away from tower. He's supposed to be on the top side of the map, either double jungling or already at the tower with his team to fast push it down. Second play, wait, though. Wait, wait, wait. Also, <laughs> I mean, it, it, coupled sure, with sure. that, there was another problem there. Because the Gragas was weak side jungling without the top laner even being there, which made the invade even easier. I mean, it was such a weird start. And then 
So the response from Gamsu is saying, OK, I've seen Gragas and Fiora on bot side, which means they're not top side yet, so I will TP up there. Problem is, he doesn't have part two of that plan. Part <laughs> one is, I'm going to TP in and get some of this farm. Part two is, oh, but they're going to show up here with four members, and I still have two guys on bottom side. So if that dive was executed properly, where Maud doesn't fail his combo on the Alistar, Nautilus just dies. That's not instantly. a sentence we're used to saying, though. No, it's not. And then the Nautilus just dies, and it kind of nullifies the whole mistake QG made. It was super risky, and it was a very, very missed time dive from QG that gave all these kills over. So break down the next 10 minutes of the game for me from sort of 5 to maybe 15. We have a replay of a dragon fight, um, which I know you two feel very strongly about. But as we set this up, uh, talk to me about what happened in this particular instance. Monty, what do we say <laughs> about dragon fights or taking dragon and fighting at the same time? You should always do it, especially at even or lower gold. Someone quote that from Monte Cristo. <laughs> okay, okay. We will now run the replay and show you exactly why you should always do dragon and then team fight at the same time. Because what will happen is that your jungler is now useless. He will tank the dragon and try and kill the dragon while the fight starts. Uzi also just used his package super weird to jump back out. He can get, gets engaged on. Look at Swift here. He's adding a lot of value in this team fight by taking the dragon. So we we fighting 4v5. And holding on to his ultimate simultaneous. Uh, that's the tilt ultimate in the end he used. <laughs> where he's like, oh, well, guys, I got dragon. I guess worth it. And it was, it the was higher the, fight. It was the party casket. Is <laughs> yeah, like, you know? hey, I'm here. <laughs> All right, so this is obviously a very big misplay from QG. It gave Fnatic some breathing room. It gave them a solid, uh, you know, two, 3,000 gold lead. But truthfully, Fnatic seem to be a lot more proactive. They seem to be more aggressive in some of their plays. Yes, true. Uh, you know, uh, just great in general play from Fnatic, and all of it was enabled by Spirit and Lee Sin. It was, I mean, Spirit was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, wonderful. In this game, so insane in both team fights and creating picks. Also, though, I want to talk Victor, because it was the last pick into the Quinn. When you pick Victor into Quinn, you might go even in lane, potentially maybe even try and aim for a kill, but one, if you want to do that, you have to run Exhaust and not Teleport, so you lose your chance to be uh, basically a bit of a threat on the map and not just sit and wave clear. And two, you have to go early Hourglass because you're into Quinn, which makes Victor a lot weaker. It sets him really far behind compared to some of the other great items he can get that are kind of boost him towards his late game point. Hourglass is too expensive as well. That means doing B had very low impact after the first few fights, and Quinn was just all over the map. Well, well, there was also the additional problem was that Doon B ended up in side lanes a bunch instead right. of wave clearing mid, which is what you should do. And he's used to playing with TP Victor, and he played it like he was playing TP Victor. There is no reason to have Victor in top lane trying to split push a tier two with exhaust. A oh, lot, of, a lot of the what misplays. A lot of and misplays we saw Fnatic do in the last game. That made them actually lose a lot of the team fights. We highlighted Client, the Alistar, some of the issues why it swapped. Uh, yeah, QG were actually winning fights. It kind of swapped around. And Fnatic had almost flawless team fights here. Well, bring up the second replay because uh, this is obviously one of the great setups uh, with Spirit and, and in fact Cly. Uh, roll the clip out and you can see both Spirit and Cly placing wards, setting up vision. If you look at your minimap, they're about to really sort of catch a, a slightly awkward flank, and Spirit, he just finds Uzi and, and singles him out to fish. Yeah, he, he, come, he comes in on the ward right there. Easy. And watch this. He punts him straight into Febivin, who is super fed. I mean, at that point, a Quinn is just going to combo the crap out of you, and that's just about it. And in the rest of this fight, Reckless is on the back line. Moore's trying to eliminate him, but he's able just to wrap back around. Febbin lives thanks to the Maw of Malmordius, but most of this fight was just a setup from Spirit. Yeah. Instant kill onto Uzi. I was watching I Will Dominate's what reviews he does, and he, he talked about how when he talked to Rush about Lee Sin as a champion in the West, a lot of their European junglers and, and NA junglers consider Lee Sin like get level six and make some plays in the mid game and then you fall off late game. A lot of the Korean junglers value Lee Sin very highly as a late game team fighter. Because if you get these flanks, you are so good at setting up these picks. You can insect people with Q flash, which is almost impossible to react to unless you flash beforehand. And then you kick in an important target, like in a fight like this, Quinden smacks you in the face, you die instantly as Uzi, and then the fight is won by Fnatic. So beautiful team fighting against what's supposed to be the best team fighting team in China. All right, we do have one more replay. This is a slightly skewed replay because Fnatic have a 15,000 gold lead when this takes place. <laughs> you're sure anyway, you're rope, you're it, rope. It, it is the game winning team play. Uh, roll the clip out. Um, and again, it's just, it feels like Fnatic are functioning a little bit more on a, a follow spirits and find the targets. 
Well, a, another ball. hook straight onto Uzi there, and that's just going to bounce him around. Febbin gets set up again, but watch Spirit here. He actually is going to find Doan B inside the base, and he holds off on this ultimate for quite a long time, waits until the flash is used, and then he actually gets knocked back there, flashes, and then kicks again right over the base wall. And it's just this Jin is working so well. Reckless is playing an absolute fantastic. Gets yeah. super long range snipes. Yeah, I'm actually most impressed by the fact that he had some like max range roots in that game too. This is certainly some of the best gin play that I've seen in the professional scene. And I think it's going to be banned. Also because it stops Uzi from playing Kalista, as we saw in the last pick and ban phase. We were like, oh, first with Kalista. No way, Jin is open. And then both teams didn't want to pick Kalista, which normally is considered a complete S tier pick for almost every team in the world. Well, we'll have to find out what the teams decide to do. Uh, when we come back, Fnatic, they did win in a quicker time, so they will get the choice of side going into the deciding match. As we go, some of you guys have been asking all day, what's that song? No, it's not Sandstorm. It is Elite Mob. Uh, check it out over at uh, www.youtube.iem. We'll be back in three and a half. It's on that paper. <laughs> <laughs>